Good evening and happy to have you with us for my week. I'm Christy McDonald. Everywhere you look this week, it's all about the money. The state treasury department is working overtime with more cities in financial trouble and Wayne County is sliding toward the edge. We'll take a look at what they need to do and if it's even possible to avoid an emergency manager. Plus the holdups in Detroit's bankruptcy case that could tack on years. Also tonight, a look at the 2014 election, the fight for the open U.S. Senate seat between Gary Peters and Terry Lynn Land. Squabbles in Lansing over a tax cut. Republicans are at odds with the governor, but will it mean savings for you? And guess how much we spent on Kwame Kilpatrick's lawyers. It's all coming up tonight. But first, the number of cities in financial crisis across Michigan is growing. Just this week, Highland Park and Royal Oak Township tried to persuade the state that they didn't need an emergency manager. And Wayne County is struggling this week to find a way to cut their deficit, including spinning off wastewater facilities and cutting into the prosecutor and the sheriff's budgets again. Let's start right there with our My Week contributors, Nolan Finley of the Detroit News and Stephen Henderson of the Detroit Free Press. Hi, guys. Hey. How are you? All right. We're good. <laughs> you know, it's seriously, I feel like it has all been about the money this week. Everywhere you took, everyone's talking about money, how much we have, we how much we don't, more. how much we owe. We just need more. <laughs> all right, well, we all need more, but it's got to go into the right place. So let's take a look at Wayne County mm -hmm. and the problems that they have right now. So they've got a deficit somewhere between, what, 175 and 220 million? Somewhere that 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 floating number can That's they their operating deficit? Yeah. Plus, they've got huge <clears throat> a huge problem with their pension system. They may be as much as sixty percent underfunded in that pension system. Don't have the money they need to meet their promises. Uh, they're probably in worse shape than Detroit is. So they're taking a look at what they can cut. Is it possible, Stephen, to even cut their way out of this at this point? Well, I thought uh, Robert Fricano put together a pretty decent plan uh, this week uh, that he that he's unveiling for the commission to, to really try to attack the the imbalances that they have um, uh, is it possible I mean you've got to get the commission to go along they are deep cuts uh, it would entail spinning off this uh, this water treatment uh, uh, system that they have it's a dramatic it's a dramatic move and it's the kind of thing it, what it reminded me of was the kind of thing that we didn't do in Detroit when we when we were in deep trouble, where we didn't really come up with a plan that was a, a, a frontal attack on the structural problems. Uh, but it may be too late. Um, you know, I mean, the, the the problems they have with the pension that no, that no one mentioned are huge. Uh, and and as Facano said, the the big problem in the county is the dip in the tax base. Uh, counties are funded almost exclusively off property taxes and Wayne County has lost more uh, of that than the other counties did and has not recovered as much. To so. the tune of like 300 million dollars yeah. since 2008, yeah. right? Yeah, I don't think it's quite that much, but um, I mean, well, that, <laughs> that, that number grows every time Ficano talks about it and it is coming back. I mean, it's slowly coming back. The ba basic problem is in, in, in Wayne County is no difference in the, the problem in Detroit. <clears throat> it's decades of mismanagement. Uh, they, you had folks like Fricano and McNamara before him who put politics first and their own political uh, ambitions before the good of the county, made a lot of promises, spent a lot of money. Um, they, they, instead of concentrating on delivering core services, they expanded in a lot of different er areas. It's been a mismanaged county, and I'm not sure it's managed that much better today, even in the face of the con of, of this crisis. He put some cuts on the table yesterday. Deep cuts. But he, he put some good cuts on yeah. the table yesterday, and that's essential. But he didn't deal, he didn't address these legacy costs. That's still a political hot potato he won't touch, and I doubt the commission will touch. Well, and the question with the, with the legacy costs, again, is if the state is helping Detroit with its legacy code. The, the numbers are not significantly different between uh, uh, Detroit and Wayne County with regard to that that problem. What I, I'm not sure, and I asked the governor about this last week, you know, at what point do, do other people in the state raise their hands and say, well, you're helping Detroit, we need the same help, uh, where's where's our where's yeah. our our but bill? But can and you imagine the outcry? Well, I, if the no governor, question. if the if the state steps in to bail out the Detroit pension system in a way it's trying to do for Detroit, 
Falcano has people out there 40, 41, 42 okay. years old Getting drawing a hundred thousand dollar a year. It's a pension. worse. It's a much Do worse. You think system. the state taxpayers are going to say, "Oh yeah, we'll cover, we'll cover those I don't, pensions." I don't. Okay, I don't so let's go ahead. Much abuse. Let's go ahead. You said that there were some pretty good cuts, and this was a pretty good plan. Do they have the time though to implement? When you say spinning off the wastewater facilities, that's going to take time to get some kind of regional authority. And when you say take put cuts in the prosecutor's office and the sheriff's department, they've had those cuts, and they're actually in litigation right now to, yeah. to stop. I mean, those that's cuts. that's part and of. Worthy they came out and said, this is a CEO that doesn't give a damn about public about safety. About public safety. I mean, you have this structural problem in Wayne County, which is that, you know, uh, uh, Ficano's the CEO, but, but he's also got the courts, which are managed uh, uh, independently, and the prosecutor's office uh, that's, that's managed independently, and the sheriff's office yeah. that's managed independently, and those are all managed by elected officials who don't answer to him. And so... Uh, uh, there isn't enough money to do all the things that need to be done. Well, there's never going to be enough money as long as you have three or four in the autonomous elected uh, officials who could spend what they want without yeah. consequence. And I don't know they're how they're not responsible for balancing the budget, right. so they can spend whatever right. they want. And they're That's all what, yeah. Go ahead. I don't think an emergency manager helps because oh. an emergency manager would take over the board and the executive's function. It's unclear what it would take for the emergency manager to also take over yeah. the sheriff, the prosecutor, the courts, and the court. And so he may not other, be in any better shape. Yeah, I mean, the problem is that they're all right, right? Uh, Kim Worthy is right about the money she needs to run the prosecutor's office. There's a lot of crime in Wayne County, and she's, you know, probably one of the most effective uh, public officials we have, elected public officials that we have at her job. It's not, it's not cheap. The sheriff's office, now, the, the sheriff's office, I think, you got a lot of appointees running around there, costing a lot of money. Maybe you could uh, reduce those, but but he manages the jail, and the jail, because it's not a new jail, because we waste all that money on the new jail, and what not going to have it's one. Not happening. Not going to have one. Managing that jail is more expensive than it should be uh, because of the way it's set up. So there's no there's no villain here you can point to and say you're the person who's just wasting a lot of money and if you would just stop we'd be okay the truth is that everybody has a, a really good point there's just not enough money because of the way uh, uh, the revenue is and because of the legacy costs there's not enough money to provide the services okay so uh, I, I don't hang on I so I don't want we don't want to find who the villain is here but where's the solution and if you sit here and say that emergency manager is, is not, not even the fix. solution here then whoa people are saying what are you talking about, bankruptcy, talking about bankruptcy then you, you probably are talking about a bankruptcy but let's remember you say there's not enough money but <clears throat> Lane County spends far more per capita than either uh, um, on government than either Macomb or Oakland almost as much put together as those two it also, and they do a far better job of managing yeah it resources. also provides more services it, than than uh, Macomb or Oakland does and that's what those costs are about now some, you can you some. can say you can say uh, maybe we don't need to provide those services maybe the county steps back uh, and, and doesn't do that but but you look at the uh, payroll across the board they so everything costs more in Wayne County but it's not because just the they legacy offer more services sure. no yeah. I mean they it, it costs them more to do the same thing than it does in Oakland County. Yeah, there's no Brooks, question about that. Brooks Patterson stood up last night in a state of the county address it and said, you know, we got a, like two two hundred and eighty million dollars cash on hand here. I would doubt that the people of Oakland County feel like they're getting less government from their county than well, the people but, of but, but but I mean they are. They are getting they are getting fewer services than than they offer in Wayne County. The question is whether county government should be providing those services or can afford to. Uh, but but it's not like uh, you know they're just <laughs> collecting money and and pocketing it uh, well, no. uh, a lot of that has gone <laughs> well, okay all right, now, hang on. The, well, the <laughs> FBI is in there for a reason <laughs> take a look. all right but I want to back up and take a, a, before we leave this topic a real quick big picture look at uh, a lot of the other cities who are now tumbling down the road to financial crisis if an emergency manager is not the solution for someone the size of, uh, as Wayne County yeah. is it still the solution it's still the good solution for these smaller cities like perhaps a Lincoln Park who's now it's rolling a short down that term. Road. it's a short short-term fix. Uh, the, the, all of these cities uh, are falling into this into this uh, situation for for similar problems that are much more structural. The legacy costs, which uh, you've got to figure out a way to, to, to reorganize that debt. So are we going uh, to see more bankruptcies, do you think, in the state of Michigan? You either, you either, you're either going to have to do, do bankruptcies or you're going to have to talk about statewide solutions uh, to these problems and big changes to the way we do local government. The, 
emergency manager is still the best vehicle for a local community. It doesn't work in a county like Wayne because of the of the diffuse structure of authority. But it's in a place like Lincoln Park, it's still the best answer for now. But long term, these cities have got to decide whether they're going to be job providers and benefit providers or service providers. But, but and they've got to do their jobs more efficiently with the taxpayers first in mind. I, Last but word they've on all, this, they've, all of the cities who've been in emergency management have, have done that. And most of them are not uh, in much better shape now because, again, the structural problems. You think of the cities that have gone in, come out, and gone back in. You think of cities like Highland Park and Hamtramck, which uh, are... are, are are better structured now, but still really struggling uh, to balance the books and provide services. It's a systemic problem that we've got to address in terms of the way we do and local perhaps government. Perhaps we need to look at more, uh, more consolidation. Why do we have so many? Right uh, of units of government. There's too many of these small communities with too yeah. much overhead and of services.